everyone this is Ross and today I want to go over a very special fig it's called the trace is it's a ponds variety so Montserrat ponds in Spain he has a huge collection there that he helps uh, preserve he preserves thousands of varieties I think with the help of the Spanish government and this is one that he really likes and he has a whole write-up on every variety that he grows um, similar to how I guess I'm doing it here. I'll grow a fig, I'll review it, you know, really come up with a lot of details that I think are necessary. Uh, and he written an, he's written an entire book on this thing. So Pons is like the equivalent to if Condit was alive. And Condit was the leading expert on figs for many years. Uh, and I think Pons has taken that role. At least uh, if you ask most people in the fig community, who is the leading expert on the figs, they will tell you it's Pons, whether or not he admits it himself. But um, this is one of his figs that's super, super uh, productive, very early. It's his earliest variety in uh, Mallorca uh, in Spain. So it's not necessarily going to be early here. Um, that doesn't always translate over. Um, but it did translate over in this particular fig, which is really, really, I'm happy to see it uh, because it's reliably ripening here without any head start. Um, it also would be a really tasty fig for about any climate. Um, the main reason here is because it really holds up to the rain. So if you get any, if you have a rainy climate at all, this fig is going to hold up to the rain. We're going to test this out tomorrow because it's going to rain here all day tomorrow. I'm going to pick one of the guys down here, which is super ripe. You can see the cracking on it. You know, it's barely hanging on. It's starting to shrivel. That's how I like my figs, guys. And then, you know, this one over here, these, these few other ones here, I'm going to let them sit there probably. We even have one down here. We'll let them sit there in the rain and see how they hold up. I may pick this one here to show you guys, I think I will, I'll show you guys, because this is the second most ripe, um, and we'll do a little bit of comparison here of you know different levels of ripeness with it. But the reason I think it's uh, also gonna do well in just about every climate is because it's so productive. Uh, it, it's called Detrace Displace because it produces three crops. Uh, so in a really warm climate like California or Arizona, you'll get a Braba, and actually a quite productive Braba. Then you'll get a main crop, as you see right here. And then you'll get a second main crop, which hasn't shown up yet. But it would show up if I left the figs on. Because as soon as the tree starts growing again, it gets some energy. Um, a lot of these trees actually will put out a second main crop, I find. So that's why it's called the Trace Displace, is because it's extremely productive and produces three times. So overall, I think it's a huge winner. Um, I've already eaten figs off of this tree. I've eaten figs off of my friend's tree, Matt, who uh, was you know, a great pal and able to share uh, a couple figs with me last year off his tree. He also gave me this tree. Uh, so yeah, hats off to Matt for me even having this variety. And uh, you can see I have an air layer on it down here. That's because I think this variety is gonna be such a winner. It already is a winner. Um, I have no doubt in my mind. I mean, we're going to taste these figs here, get a really accurate rating on the taste. But so far, for even just the taste aside, the producti productiveness, the resistance to the rain, um, I mean, it's a huge winner. I mean, it ripens well before many of my figs. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely before LSU Champagne, which we reviewed. Uh, it may or may not be before Azores Dark. It's probably before Suwadi. And it's probably before Brandon Street Unknown. So this is an exceptionally early fig, along with Rondé de Bordeaux. This fig I have right here called Rasti's Persian Unknown, also very, very early. Improved Celeste, you know, Malta Black, very early varieties. And this one is in that category, guys, of ripening here in Pennsylvania the first week of August with absolutely no head start. So let's pick the fig, guys. And we'll get a nice accurate taste rating. Um, this one's really starting to dry on the tree. I'm really excited to try these two. Uh, whoa! So I 
just drop one. <laughs> I picked one. Let me grab this guy. Sorry for the camera work here, but I gotta grab this. I picked one. Oh my god, look at that. So it fell off the tree. And you can see it's so mushy and soft that the uh, the fig just split really wide open. That's a really good sign that your figs are ripe, guys. But I picked one with my girlfriend a little bit too early. I'd say a couple days too early. We're going to bring these over into the shade because I'm afraid the camera is getting too hot. It is it is 90 degrees out here. We haven't had too much rain in the last few days. So these figs should be of really high quality. Um, so let's cut these guys open. I mean, here's... Here's the fig, I guess, before I, I do that. Uh, it has a pretty tight eye, for sure. And the interesting thing I've seen on the, the fig I picked with my girlfriend is that there's honey leaking from the eye. So this is a black fig with honey leaking from the eye. A very desirable trait. And it seems to be pretty consistent so far. Not on these two, but maybe that's because it's been so hot. I find that sometimes if it's too hot, guys, it will, um, it just won't produce honey. It just seems like it, it, uh, the fig ripens too quickly, and then as a result, it won't produce honey. But if they ripen slower in more humid conditions, uh, a lot of times they'll produce honey. You can see, oh my god, so the one that I dropped. This one actually is has tons of honey in it. You can actually kind of feel it on the outside. You can feel when the fig gets like really, um, I think like there's like a glob of something in there. You know what I mean? Like it's really. Whereas this is more. Not as uh, this is more dense. This this one here, which is somewhat drying, whereas this one is more like glob of honey. Like you can feel. A pretty good difference between the two anyway let's try the dried one first because they should this should be more ripe and it should uh, knock my socks off you can see though that there is honey in both of them so it's not like uh, one should be sweeter than the other one that's quite good um, so there's a melon aftertaste, which I would find figgy. In the beginning is lots of sweetness. Uh, there's very little berry. It's more sweet than berry. It's good. It's definitely good. There's a lot. This is the, the, um, the one that has a ton of honey in it, the larger one that I dropped. actually not that much difference between one day and the next which is quite surprising it's a really good fig it's actually very sweet um, I think I would give this one a, it's either between an 8 or a 9 it's very sweet it's over it's almost overly sweet um, I'm going to have to say 8, because I think a 9 is a whole nother level of fig, but for all the other reasons besides the taste, I mean, it's it's a really good fig. If it's an 8, it's a really tasty fig. I haven't really even shown you guys anything less than an 8, but there's definitely some figs I've had this year, previous years, that are definitely not an 8. Uh, I've had uh, a Blava Breba this year that was probably a six or a seven. I've had two uh, Blava Brabas. I also had a Olympian Braba, which um, wasn't like a, it was probably a six or a seven as well. So overall, that's the trace of Splace, guys. Uh, I'm going to put the full Pond's description in the description of this video. So what he does is he writes up, like I said, he writes up an entire write-up of the, uh, the fig itself goes into many more details than I could po probably cover in this video. Uh, and he does it for every single variety that he has, and he puts that all in a book. I and mean, that's how 
professional and expert you know the expertise of this guy is it's just like it's on another level so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put uh, that description in the description of the video and uh, you guys can get to read a little bit more details straight from his mouth uh, because I can have different experiences from him uh, but for the most part what he says is gonna be more truthful than than what I have to say so really a good fig uh, definitely an eight approaching nine so uh, if you live just about anywhere I would get this fig this would be uh, a really nice choice for anywhere that uh, you can ripen a fig so anyway guys I'll talk to you all later take care